بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين المصطفى بالقاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجبه وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا الله صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى ولعنة الله على أعداء مجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وقرآنه الحميد وقوله الحق أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عم يتساءلون عن النبأ العظيم الذي هم فيه مختلفون كلا سيعلمون ثم كلا سيعلمون ألم نجعل الأرض مهادا والجبال أوتادا وخلقناكم أزواجا وجعلنا نومكم سباتا وجعلنا الليل لباسا وجعلنا النهار معاشا صدق الله العلي العظيم صل على محمد وآل محمد الله صل على محمد وآل محمد وآل We started our discussion about Surah An-Nabah a couple of nights ago Very briefly I will just summarize that Surah An-Naba is the last, is the first Surah of the last Juzu in the Holy Quran. And we started our discussion here about a question that was proposed. About what are they asking? About an important news. But this news they are in dispute about. الَّذِيهُمْ فِيهِ مُخْتَلِفُونَ And then Quran says, كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ They will find out. And then ثُمَّ After some time, كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ Again, they will find out. So, we briefly mentioned that the interpreters of the Quran here suggest that the ones who are asking are the mushrikeen of Mecca. This is one interpretation. The mushrikeen of Mecca came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and they're asking about the day of judgment, the day of resurrection that they are having a dispute about how can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revive the bodies after they have deteriorated, decomposed, turned into bones and rather into dust. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers كلا سيعلمون ثم كلا سيعلمون They will find out Then they will find out And so some of the Mufassireen say that the first They will find out is referring to after death The minute they die They will realize the truth They will see things for what they really are That is the next life after this life which the Quran refers to as Al-Barzakh, the world of the Barzakh, which means the barrier between this world and the hereafter. And then, ثُمَّ كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ Then they will find out, is referring to the Day of Judgment. Yani they will find out again on the Day of Judgment, that's a different world, a different reality that they will experience. So that is one interpretation of these ayat. And then we said that there are some narrations that the Quran has vahir and batin, has explicit messages and has implicit hidden messages. These hidden messages 
can only be taught to us through the ma'soom. The ma'soom is the one who teaches us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Ali Imran refers to this in ayah number seven. وَمَا يَعْلَمْ تَأْوِيلَهِ تَأْوِيلُ الْقُرْآنِ The deeper meaning of the Qur'an. Nobody knows it except Allah. وَالرَّاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ Those who are well versed in the knowledge and according to the ahadith of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam that they are the ones who are الرَّاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ Well versed in the knowledge of the Holy Qur'an. So they can dive deep into the Qur'an to the levels or to levels we are unable to dive in. And so going to this, <coughs> the tafsir or another tafsir of this ayah, Amma Yatasa'alun is about Amirul Mu'mineen, Salamullahi Alayhi. There are narrations where he would say, Ana Nabaul Azim, Alladhi fihi mukhtalifun. I am the important news about whom people are in dispute. And indeed, as I mentioned last night, the first problem that Muslims faced after Rasulullah sallallahu was imamah. That's the first dispute that they had. They did not have a dispute about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tawheedullah, nor did they have a dispute about nubuwa. Their dispute was about the khilafah, the imamah. It was the first dispute. And hence, imamah became a separate asl of usul al-deen a separate root of religion. Otherwise, if you really think about it, usul al-deen are three. Tawheed, and from Tawheed stems Adalah, Adalatullah. It's an extension of Tawheed. But because there was so much dispute about this Adalah that it became a separate asl, and hence it became a second one, a Tawheed wal adl And then Nubuwa, and imama is an extension of nubuwa. Because all the proofs we use for imama are the same ones we use for nubuwa. So it's just an extension. But because there was so much dispute about imama, it became a separate asl as well. And then the last one is ma'ad, or resurrection. So in essence, usul al are three. But because there was so much dispute about adala and imama, they were added as separate asl of usul al or roots of the religion. So these ayat may also be referring, or I should say are also referring, in addition to the Day of Judgment, they also refer to Amir al-Mu'mineen, salamullahi alayhi. Yani another tafsir of the ayat, another ta'wil of the ayat, or some of the ulama, they say not even ta'wil, it's actually tafsir of the ayat, is Amir al-Mu'mineen. Amma yatasa'alun, what do they ask about? They ask about the important news, and that is Imam Ali. In this case, the ones who are asking are not the mushrikeen. And here, who is asking? The Muslims are asking. The Sahaba are asking. The dispute comes from the Sahaba. عن النبى العظيم أمير المؤمنين الذي هم فيه مختلفون about whom that they are in dispute because some people say we follow him, some people say we don't follow him. So there's a dispute, and then. Allah says, Kalla sayalamun, they will find out. And we said that at the time of death, people will see Amirul Mu'mineen, Salamullah alayhi. This is in our aqeedah. And not only in our aqeedah, as I mentioned a couple nights ago, even some Sunni scholars mentioned this, like Al Hafid al Shirazi in his book. He also says that when we die, we will be asked, the Prophet told Imam Ali alayhi salam, they will be asked about your wilaya as well. Waman imamuk when we die. And then, ثُمَّ كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ Then they will find out on the day of judgment, the status of Amir al-Mu'mineen, salamu Allah alayhi, on the day of judgment, as per a riwayah, a narration attributed to al-Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, where he tells one of his companions, كَيْفَ بِكُمْ How about you on the day of judgment when your Imam is Ali ibn Abi Talib يَوْمَ نَدْعُوا كُلَّ أُنَاسٍ بِإِمَامِهِمْ when we will call every group of people with their imam, to follow their imam, and your imam is Ali ibn Abi Talib, salamullah alayhi. Where do you think he will take you? Then imam answers, salamullah alayhi, qala al-jannatu wallah, al-jannatu wallah, al-jannatu wallah. 
So that is Amir al-Mu'mineen, salam Allah alayhi. On the day of judgment, people will recognize the true status of Amir al-Mu'mineen, salam Allah alayhi. And we'll talk more about Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam on the 19th night and the 20th and the 21st, those three, four nights that we will designate specifically, inshallah, to Amir al-Mu'mineen, salam Allah alayhi. Now, after this kind of brief recap, and I just mentioned this brief recap because I know there were some mu'mineen who were not with us, so I just wanted to give them this recap. So this way you've caught up with whatever we discussed back a couple of nights ago. Tonight, inshallah, very briefly, we'll move on to the next ayat of Surah al naba So inshallah, if Allah gives us tawfiq, besides the designated special nights of Amir al-Mu'mineen, salam Allahi alayhi, and the night of Qadr, our discussion in the English language will be about Surah al naba insha'Allah. So the next ayat was starting from number six. These ayat, the next so 11 or so ayat, they mention about 12, 12 evidence of perfection or greatness of creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to indicate that this universe, this world, has a creator, has a maker. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts in ayah number six. Alam naj'al al-arwa mihada. Have we not made earth? Allah uses the word a cradle. Mihad min al-mahd. We say to the cradle of the baby, mahd. Why? Because it's nice, smooth, comfortable for the baby. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this earth comfortable for us to live on it. For example, Allah out of his rahmah, out of his rahmah, did not make the whole of earth mountains. Imagine if we had to walk on mountains. It would have been really difficult to build homes on mountains. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a lot of the earth flat. And by flat, I don't mean the earth is flat. Huh? Don't, don't, please don't confuse this. But it's easy for us or easier for us to walk on it. Okay. Now, these are blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, brothers and sisters, when COVID hit, the restrictions that were imposed upon different communities because of COVID made us realize some of the blessings that we used to take for granted. For example, I don't know about here, but in Canada, they said, don't shake hands anymore. People were told, don't shake hands. Now, we have a hadith. There are narrations that say, when two mu'mineen, for example, shake hands, before they let go of their hands, all their sins will drop just like leaves in the time of fall. That's how much, so, and there's barakah for mu'mineen when they shake hands. Of course, men with men and women with women, that is. So, there is barakah. Now, at times of Eid, if you remember, you know, we usually, they hug each other, mashallah, especially the Iraqis, mashallah, you know, they have that kind of affinity and love of expression of love. So, but all that was stopped. In addition, I don't know about here also, gatherings were prevented. You're not allowed to gather anymore. Yani you can only gather you and yourself. That's it. No one else is allowed. So we started missing really such gatherings like this when we used to come and attend. Now these gatherings, we take them for granted. Honestly, we take them for granted. But to come and see mu'mineen, talk to people afterwards, you know, have chai together, Discuss, talk. Remember, we are social beings. This is important for us. That's why they said during the COVID era, mental health problems were on the rise because of all the social isolation and disconnection and so on and so forth. Interestingly, in the, in the province where I come from in Canada, the province where I come from, initially they said no contacts among people except people living in one household. I mean, that's the only contact allowed. But then they realized, what if people were single? They have no household. These people have no contact whatsoever. So then they made an exception. If you're single by yourself, then you can go with one person as well. 
because they realize it's really detrimental. On, it's like solitary confinement. Solitary confinement in certain countries in the world, they, they said it's illegal. It's not allowed anymore to imprison someone in isolation because it's torture. So there are certain things that we take for granted as human beings because we see them all the time. We don't realize them. Simple things that we think is simple, like shaking hands of people, sitting down and meeting with people, talking to people, having chai you know, with people. These are blessings, na'am, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Allah says in one of the ayat of the Quran, and if you count the blessings of Allah, you will not be able even to perceive them. Leave alone, count them. لَن تُحْصُوهَا يعني You will not be able, because these are blessings we don't even think about. Okay. Now, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this earth in a way that it is inhabited, it's a big blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but because we've lived with it, we've grown up with it, we take it for granted. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this earth that we made it in an inhabitable manner for you people. And then subhanallah, there are things that Allah puts on this earth which are in cohesion with one another. For example, we as humans, what do we breathe? When we breathe, what, what do we breathe? What, what gas do we breathe? Oxygen. What do we exhale? Carbon dioxide. Plants, on the other hand though, what do they breathe? They breathe carbon dioxide. What do they exhale? Ox Subhanallah. Why didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, make the plants breathe nitrogen, for example? He could have done so. That the plants breathe in nitrogen instead of carbon dioxide. And they would exhale something else. He could have done this. But subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this earth with this beautiful balance. So us as humans or animals in general, what we breathe is what the plants exhale. And what we exhale is what the plants quote unquote breathe. Okay? And they use for photosynthesis. So subhanallah, this beautiful architecture of this world is just amazing. And then the seas and the oceans, they play a very important role. If you read and study about the atmosphere or sorry about the earth science, these seas and oceans have an important role in climate and the weather, the tides, and the currents, amazing, subhanAllah, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this earth. Alam naj'alil And then, to work with this, waljibala awtada. And we made mountains that are like pillars. Pillars. Now, mountains also play a very important role on earth. First of all, beauty, mashallah. I see here in Auckland, you have a lot of mountains. And they're all green, mashallah. So it's so beautiful, very nice to look at. But in addition, they play a very important role, even in the climate. Um, in areas, I remember um, in Vancouver, Canada, it's called British Columbia, and between it and the next province, which is Alberta, there are a series of mountains called the Rocky, Rocky Mountains. These Rockies play a very important role in affecting the climate. So the current that comes from the Pacific Ocean, it comes, and if it weren't for these Rockies, then this tide would come into Alberta and would tremendously influence the temperatures in Alberta. But because of the mountains, they kind of are like a natural wall. And then sometimes in the year, there is some air that is carried because hot air rises, cold air, Sinks, it's denser. Because of that change, subhanallah, that slight change in the air and the weather, some of that hot air rises and goes over the mountains. And so therefore, there is a city in Canada, in Alberta, called Calgary. Calgary, in the winter, it's cold. Mashallah, there, I was told these days, uh, Auckland is cold. I told them, you guys are joking here. You know, they say, it's 10 degrees. I say, mashallah, come to Canada. It's minus 20, minus 30 degrees. Then we talk about cold. All right, so, uh, but Calgary in the winter is cold. It gets sometimes minus 20, minus 30. In the middle of the winter, middle of the winter, 
Sometimes this hot air comes from the Pacific Ocean and travels and crosses the mountain. And so Calgary, at certain times, in the middle of the winter, when it's like minus 20, all of a sudden the temperature rises to in the plus. They call them Chinooks. Chinooks, that's what's it called, the phenomena, a Chinook. So for a week, approximately, or a two-week period, they get very nice weather. The weather turns to be very beautiful, from minus 20, minus 30. Yani all this beautiful design. See, mountains, subhanAllah, play a very important role, in addition to the other roles of the mountains that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described as pillars. So they are playing a very important role in the stabilization of the earth, the overall architecture of earth. So Allah says, أَلَمْ نَجْعَلِ الْأَرْضَ مِهَادَ وَالْجِبَالَ أَوْتَادَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, look at all this architecture that we have done. This architecture, this beautiful design that we've made, do you really think just happened by coincidence? Can it all just happen, just come? There must be a designer, a creator, a maker. So that is a proof. This beautiful architecture is a design. A proof of a designer, a maker. Second, it's a proof that this designer has power and ability. Third, this designer is wise. If he has made such a beautiful design, there must be a purpose for it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, we did not create the heavens and the earth just for people to play in vanity. Allah is hakim, wise. Quran is hakim, wise. Allah would not make things out of vanity. At the time of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, there were a growing more movement, or there was a growing movement of what we call today atheists. Back in those days, they used to call them zanadiqa. Zanadiqa. Because there was a book called Az-Zand, Kitab zand And these people were influenced by that, and hence Zandiq. You know, man kana muta'athiran bi kitab zand So anyways, we call them today atheists. Back in those days, they used to call them zanadiqa. And that's why some of the translators, they don't translate zandiq as atheists. They translate them as dualists. Mathnawi. Because it talks about duality. Anyways, we don't want to get into that for now. But there were a whole bunch of atheists at the time of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. And you know, interestingly, brothers and sisters, if you look at some of the arguments proposed by the atheists at the time of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, you'll find the same arguments presented today. You'd think for 1400 years or you know, 1200 years, people have not changed their arguments. They're still using the same arguments and the Imam answered them. At that time, the reputation, now Imam al-Sadiq was in Medina, but his reputation started to become global. There are reports where people used to come from India to debate with Imam al-Sadiq, India. In this particular case, Egypt. Now, Egypt is far from Medina, but the reputation of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam made it all the way into Egypt. Now we're talking 1200 years ago, not at the time of internet and YouTube and satellite. Yani how did the reputation of the Imam travel all the way to Egypt? You can see how much work that the Imam sallallahu alayhi did. And one of the ulama, Rahmatullah ta'ala alayhi, said Muhammad Kadhim al-Qazwini, Rahmatullah ta'ala alayhi. He started, he started Al-Imam Al-Sadiq Min Al-Mahdi Ila Al-Lahd in the Silsila. He has a series. Al-Imam Ali Alayhi Salaam Min Al-Mahdi Ila Al-Lahd, Fatima Al-Zahra Alayhi Salaam Min Al-Mahdi Ila Al-Lahd, From the Cradle to the Grave. And then he came to Al-Imam Al-Sadiq Alayhi Salaam. He started it, but unfortunately he died, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi. He has several, several other books. His children carried his mission. They carried his mission. And then they decided as they were going through it, they said instead of just doing 
Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam from the cradle to the grave, we will do the encyclopedia of Imam al-Sadiq, Mawsu'atul Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. In that Mawsu'a, in that encyclopedia, they have documented, written documents of 4,000, the names of 4,000 students of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. And we read in the book sometimes that Imam al-Sadiq had 4,000 students. But we did not know the names. They actually traced them. They started searching and digging and digging until they wrote down documents. 4,000 individuals who were students of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. That's a lot. Yani just to give you a perspective, even today, today, if you go to one of the best professors in the world, he may have you know, 200 students, 300 students, 400 students over the span of his careers. Maybe if he is you know, one of those big gurus and he's got a big lab, he might have you know, 30 people working under him at one point. Yani at most, you might have 500 students. A thousand, really, if you're pushing it. 4,000, that's a big number. That's a big number back in those days. So the reputation of Imam al-Sadiq made it all the way to Egypt. One of the atheists in Egypt heard about the Imam al-Sadiq and decided to travel from Egypt to come to Medina to debate with the Imam. Now this means he had a lot of confidence. You know, for him to travel from Egypt all the way to Medina, the guy was sure of himself. So he comes all the way to Medina, he asks about the Imam al-Sadiq they tell him he is gone to Mecca. So he goes to Mecca. He comes in Masjid al-Haram and he asks about the Imam al-Sadiq They tell him he's in the tawaf. He's doing tawaf. He goes into the tawaf and he looks for the Imam. Maybe سِمَاهُمْ فِي وُجُوهِهِمْ مِنْ أَثَرُ السُّجُودِ From the signs of the Imam alayhi, he finds him. He comes next to the Imam, shoulder to shoulder with the Imam. And the Imam alayhi, turns and he looks at him. He kind of realizes what's going on. He said to the Imam, alayhi, I've come all the way from Egypt. I went to Medina. I asked about you. They told me you're in Mecca. I came and I want to discuss with you. Al-Imam is in the tawaf. He tells him, what's your name? He says, my name is Abdul Malik. Okay. What's your kunya? What's the title? And in the Arabs, usually Abu Fulan, Abu Fulan, the father of so-and-so. Qal, Abu Abdullah. He told him, okay, I have a question for you. He said, yes. He said, your name is Abdul Malik. And your son's name is Abdullah. This Malik, whom you are a Abd of, Abdul Malik, this king, you're a servant of the king, Abdul Malik. Is he a king on the earth or a king on, uh, king on the earth or king on the skies? He said, my parents named me. You know, خلاص, my parents named me Abdul Malik and that's, I didn't have anything to do. But he kept quiet. He kept quiet. Afterwards, he, he just didn't have an answer. And then he told him, what about your son, Abdullah? Is he a god on the skies or a god on the earth? He didn't have an answer. This, in the art of debate, they say when you try to break your opponent, ego. You know, the opponent comes with an ego. You try to break that ego. That's an art. How do you break it? In this case, the Imam just asked him about his name. Okay. Because he really thought he was someone, you know, Abdul Malik. Again, to travel all the way from Egypt to come to Medina and Mecca to discuss with Imam al Sadiq, the man had ego. So when the Imam asked him, Abdul Malik, who's a king, king of the earth or king of the heavens, your son, God, God of the heavens or God of the earth? He didn't have much to say. The Imam Salam Allah told him, just wait for me, let me finish my tawaf, and then I'll come and discuss with you. So after the tawaf, the Imam comes and sits down with him. He tells him, Ya Abd al Malik. He says, Do you think that earth has a core? 
يعني this earth is not just the shell. There's, if you dig deep inside the earth, there's something down the earth. He said, maybe. He said, well, have you ever traveled inside earth? He said, no. I said, okay. What about the skies? Did you ever travel outside the atmosphere of the earth to see what's out there? He said, no. He said, but I don't think there is anything out there. He said, you don't think. He said, think. That's an opinion. That's not certainty. So how can you impose your opinion to be certainty? Yaqeen. Van. So he kept quiet. He said, we are certain. You have doubt. Have you been to the east of this earth? All the way, have you really gone east and west? He said, no. He said, Ya Abd al-Malik, you have never traveled into the earth inside. You have not traveled outside of earth. You have not even traveled in earth, east and west. And now you're coming to tell us that there is no creator and no maker and no designer. What have you seen? He says, well, you know, I still don't think that there is anything out there. He said, Ya Abd al-Malik, again, you're just imposing opinion and doubt. It's just doubt. He looked at him and he said, no one has ever spoken to me in such language before. The Imam Allah is using logic. Imam then turned to him, he said, Abdul Malik, do you see the sun? He said, yes. He said, do you see it rising every morning and then setting in the evening? He said, yes. He said, why does it ever choose not to rise? How come? If the matters were up to the sun itself, yani the sun is deciding I'm gonna rise and I'm gonna set. Why would it not choose one day not to rise? You know, خلاص, I wanna take a vacation. He said, I don't know. He said, because it does not control itself. There is someone who controls it. Someone who makes it rise and set. And have you seen the perfection? Ya Abd al-Malik. Yani today, nowadays, if you look at the calendar, in one year, you look every day what time the sun rises and what time the sun sets. You can have a calendar these days. Every day, to the minute. So that's perfection. And every year, it does not change. Yani for example, on April 7th, 2022, the sun sets. On the same time, it will set on April 7th, 2023. That time does not change in the city itself, of course. I'm talking about a particular city. Okay. So the time is fixed. Who designed all this perfection, Ya Abd al-Malik? How could this perfection come by itself? Since when have we seen perfection and design come without a designer? So Abd al-Malik then said, you are right. And then he prostrated down and said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadar rasulullah. Yani this atheist who came from Egypt, who was so convinced that he was right to the point where he traveled to Medina and to Mecca to discuss with the Imam Sallallahu Alaihi it took the Imam Sallallahu Alaihi a few minutes to show him the truth. Because it's logic, you know, unless you are in denial, unless really you're in denial. So then he says, I want to study with you. The Imam Salam Allah turned to one of his companions and he said, take him and teach him. And they say, Hasuna Islamuhu. He became a good Muslim. And then he used to go and teach people, this Abdul Malik. He started teaching people about the religion. Khair, alhamdulillah. Aqibatuhu kanat ila khair. Walhamdulillah. Nasallallah husna al aqibah. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in these couple of verses, when he talks about the beauty of the world, Alam Najalil Arwami Hada, the earth, have we not made it like a cradle? It's suitable for living. Waljiba and the mountains. Allah is using his creation as a sign of his existence. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
For those people who reflect, indeed, they will learn and they will realize and come to the conclusion that this world does have a creator, does have a designer. And this designer, when he designed it, has a purpose. So we need to turn to him, worship him, believe in him, and the way he wants, not the way we want. So that's why he sent us prophets. Because while our brain can achieve the understanding of the existence of a deity, that we can realize. But our brain cannot comprehend how he wants us to worship him. And hence he sent us the prophets to fill that gap. So that's also logic. So we believe in these prophets. And these prophets must be perfect. Because if they were sinful, God forbid, then people would not have much trust in them. So again, logic dictates that they have to be perfect, impeccable, ma'sumin. And so we follow the prophets. And then, and if it were just this world, then why should we be good? Well, there has to be then a hereafter, a resurrection, where there will be accountability. Do you have tax seasons right now? Is it tax? Do you do your taxes at this time of the year? Yes. Yeah. Just finished? Yeah, mashallah. Some people are more afraid of the tax man than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, unfortunately. Yeah. When you hear, I don't know if you see a letter sometimes, there is an audit. And he says, Inna lillahi wa inna alayhi raji'un. Some people would rather see munkar and nakir than see the auditors. Yeah. So, because people know that there is an audit, a tax audit, they usually follow their taxes really well, especially those in business. Those of you who are in business, you know, mashallah, I have to be careful about my taxes because any time the tax man can come and say, open the books. If there was no accountability, then would you have to put in as much effort? No, people say, well, I, why, why bother? There's no accountability anymore. So why bother? Accountability puts checks and balances. And therefore, the day of resurrection also is logical because if there was no accountability, then why would anyone implement the rules and follow the rules? So again, the day of judgment is a logical conclusion. And therefore, that's when I go back to saying a couple nights ago, in Islam, our usul al-deen, all can be proven through logic and proof and evidence. And hence, it's a beautiful religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase in our understanding of this beautiful religion and increase in our faith in him and in the prophets, especially Khatam al-Anbiya, Abu al-Qasimi Muhammad. Allah salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajil farjahum. And may Allah increase our faith also in the Ahlul Bayti alayhim as-salam and make us among their sincere followers and servants, insha'Allah. Bi barakat as-salati ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allah salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad wa ajil farjahum.